BLM and Antifa domestic terrorists are bailed out and supported by our now Vice President Kamala Harris. George Floyd died on May 25th in Minneapolis, Minnesota. As you see here on June 1st, we have then Senator Kamala Harris and then vice presidential candidate for the United States sharing, tweeting, tweeting a link to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, encouraging people, if you're able, chip in now, chip in now, spend some more money to the Minnesota Freedom Fund to help post bail for those protesting on the ground in Minnesota. But yet we know what was going on. These were not protests. These were violent riots. I'm sorry, you can't stand in front of a city on fire and people fighting and say, it's a protest. It's a riot. And it's not peaceful. In fact, Kamala Harris and, unfortunately, my own colleague from Minneapolis, Ilhan Omar, have shared links to the Minnesota Freedom Fund with their millions of Twitter followers. And you know what? It raised a lot of money for the Minnesota Freedom Fund. In August, the Minnesota Freedom Fund reported that it had raised $35 million in donations. Yes, when the, can the Democrat candidate for the Vice President of the United States says donate to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, people donated. When the Congresswoman from Minneapolis, Minnesota, shared on her Twitter to millions of followers and said, pointed down, meaning follow suit, donate, guess what? They raised $35 million. And guess what happened from that? As a result of all the money raised by Senator, then Senator Kamala Harris, and then the Democrat Vice President Candidate of the United States, now our current Vice President, and current Congresswoman from Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 184 domestic terrorist criminals that rioted, 184 of them were bailed out from the Minnesota Freedom Fund. The criminals they helped bail out include a woman who shot at the SWAT team, a wom another woman who was accused of killing her own friend and a convicted rapist. That's just a few of the people that were bailed out with the money raised directly for the Minnesota Freedom Fund by then Senator Kamala Harris and Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, shared on their own Twitter pages. Can you imagine if a Republican Congresswoman or Congressman or a Republican senator or a Republican president shared a bail bond link and said bail out the protesters from January 6th? Can you imagine the result of that? It would be unreal. There has been no lashback. There has been no consequences. There has been no action taken from this irresponsibility supporting domestic terrorists who are responsible for violence, crime, and costing the innocent American people an exorbitant amount of money, stress, ruining communities, ruining people's livelihoods, and tearing apart our country. No, no accountability whatsoever. The criminals, these, excuse me, these Democrat lawmakers have also voted for defunding police departments across the country. So while they also raise money for domestic terrorists committing crimes to be bailed out of jail, at the same time they legislate and vote to defund police. H.R. 1280 that they voted for and passed removed qualified immunity. Removed qualified immunity. That means police officers can be sued if someone is upset with them for their actions on the job. Police officers don't make a lot of money. They can't afford big attorney bills. It will ruin them. 
just because someone may get their feelings hurt because they got arrested. H.R. 1280 also will allow police officers to be put on a list. That means whether it is proven or unproven, someone can accuse a police officer of doing some sort of wrong and their name and information gets put on a public list that the Department of Justice will manage on a website that's open to anyone that wants to look it up. Founded or unfounded, their actions, no matter it's true or not, their name goes on this list and what they're being accused of. This is what these people voted for to do to police officers and remove a lot of their funding. After the LAPD was defunded by $150 million, Vice President Harris said, I applaud Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. As a result of the funding cuts, the LAPD dissolved its sexual assault unit. Defunding the LAPD where they have to get rid of the sexual assault unit? That's unbelievable. That means women, children, any victim of sexual assault, I'm sorry, there's not a unit there anymore to help them because they've been defunded. As a result of this defunding that Vice President Harris applauds Eric Garcetti for doing what he's done. There has been a 73% spike in shootings in LA. 73%. When you defund the police, ladies and gentlemen, there's direct consequences. That means crime goes up. There's also been a 200% higher murder rate than last year at the same time. 200%. If you don't fund law enforcement, you're funding criminals. And clearly, we can see this is what Dem some of these Democrat lawmakers have done. They have clearly funded criminals and defunded the police. Back to Minneapolis and the riots there. Notice that this date, 11-4-20, That's not too long ago. Encouraging donations. See, there's no excuse for that. November 4th, 2020. By that date, we had seen plenty of violence and damage all over the streets. There was no way to call those riots peaceful protest. We know exactly what they are. Domestic acts of terror. In Congresswoman Ilhan Omar's district, 700 buildings were damaged, burned, or destroyed. Who owns those buildings? Mostly private citizens. 1,500 businesses. Here's the list. Here's the list. It's reported from the Star Tribune. Star Tribune from Minneapolis for the Twin Cities. 1,500 privately owned businesses, heavily damaged, Two destroyed, mostly completely destroyed. So the, the problem with Congress is Congress does not get up early every single day, go into its business and have to earn the money that keeps it going. Congress does not have to work so hard, lose sleep at night to figure out how to earn the money to keep the doors open to their business. Congress does not have to lose sleep at night when things get rough, like when the government shuts down the economy because of a Chinese virus and tells businesses that they cannot keep their doors open and sell their goods and services, that they cannot earn a living. You see, Congress doesn't understand how hard it is to figure out how to keep paying your employees when that happens to you. And Congress doesn't understand or seem to care about doing a commission for the people that pay the taxes to keep the lights on in this building, to care about them and why they were violently attacked. No, Congress only cares about itself and why it was attacked on January 6th, even though there's multiple investigations going on, even though 
there's been 445 people arrested and 100 people more arrested. And justice should be served for those that committed violence here at the Capitol on January 6th. But Congress doesn't care about the American people that have suffered this entire year. And it's despicable. The human cost of a year of riots and violence is 25 American lives lost. That's been estimated. 25 Americans are dead as a direct result of BLM and Antifa terrorism that swept our nation.